Okay, so we're over in Photoshop, and what I want to do today is um, have a go at doing like a quite an extreme makeover using this image of Matt. There was a, a technique that was very popular a few years ago. It was uh, made popular by a photographer called Dave Hill. If you type in the Dave Hill effect into YouTube, you'll get a bunch of tutorials, and it's basically making the images look hyper-realistic, like they're... Um, uh, done with an airbrush rather than a photograph. So we'll have a go using this image of Matt that we took a couple of weeks ago and see what kind of results we can get. So first off I'm going to copy the layer. So we've got a copy layer there. And I think I'm going to use a curves adjustment. So Control and M for the curves adjustment. And I'm going to try and just pull a bit more contrast into the layer there. So we'll lighten that up there. So we're getting a bit more extreme on the contrast there, as you can see there. Okay, I think what we'll do is we're going to pull a little bit of the saturation out of that. So let's use a saturation level and we'll drop the saturation down a little bit. So we're down to about there. Okay. So we haven't done masses at the moment. What I want to do first off is, is let's try and um, we'll merge those levels down and I'm going to try and give Matt like a, a smoother looking skin so we're going to control and J again come up to filter here and in noise we have at the bottom here reduce noise let's give us a uh, preview box here right so here we are you can see now this is on the strength. If we put the strength right the way up, let's put the strength right the way up there. And you can see if I edit it before, there's the after. It's smoothing the skin out, giving a lot. So we'll, we'll click OK on that. And I'm actually going to run that one more time. We're going to we'll give that an, one more run on that. So noise, reduce noise. Let it come back up again. And what we do this time, we won't do it as, as high. Let's bring it down to round about, let's go four actually. Come up to four. That'll do. Okay, we'll click OK on that. And now that's affected the entire image. And really what we want is it just to affect the skin. So let's zoom in on the image now. Zoom in on Matt's face. One more. And you can see, compared to the original, there's the original shot. And we've we've smoothed out the skin. There's a lot less detail in the skin now. It's it's almost it's got like a quite a smooth airbrush kind of look. Um There's the skin beforehand, there's the skin after. But as you can see, it's affected things like the eyes and the hair and stuff like that. So let's add a layer mask in here now. Bring a soft edge brush, making sure that the foreground colors on black and the background colors on white. And we're just gonna mask out areas like the eye there. So we can bring the sharpness back into Matt's eye there. And the eyebrows there. And you can see that the sharpness is starting to pull back in as well. Lips. You can see we're getting the sharpness back in there and we'll do the edge of the nose as well. And of course the hair as well because we need detail in the hair so let's bring the brush up a little bit larger and we'll start to just bring a bit of detail into the hair there. In fact, I'm only going to do it on the big front bit of the hair because I'm quite liking the effect that it's given on the back of the hair here. You can see from one to the other. Yeah, I quite like that. So I'm going to leave that like that. Bring that back out to full. Let's quickly just mask over those areas as well. Obviously these are supposed to be sharper and it is really only the skin on the face that I'm interested in keeping blurred. 
Okay, let's leave that like that for the time being. So next up, let's turn that one off. Let's merge those down and we'll make another copy layer there. Next thing I want to do here is to work on the eyes. So let's come in here. And I'm actually going to work on the copy layer below here. You'll see why in a minute. So let's first off, let's get an elliptical marquee tool. And if you hold shift down while using this, it will draw a perfect circle. So we draw a perfect circle around Matt's eye. That's looking good. The first thing I want to do is let's pull up a hue and saturation level. So control and U, and that will give us our hue and saturation. And because we're just working within this um, marquee area, that's the only area that's going to be affected by this. So if we change the hue now, you can see that Matt's eyes color has changed to quite a purpley color there. Let's come back up the center. They're quite blue, bluey green. We come up this way. And we're getting much more of that. In fact, let's find so let's find an area that we like. Let's find a colour. I'm going to go there. And we can up the saturation if we want to. And that's too much red in that, so let's bring that back down a touch. Let's go slightly to the blue side there. Click OK. Now if we move our marquee across, it should fit exactly that there as well. But as you can see, we're not going to see as much on that eye. Control U, and I believe we are up about there. About there. But because that eye is in shadow, we're not going to see as much there, so we'll leave that as it is. Control D to get rid of the marquee tool. And you can see that it's gone over into the um, eyebrow and eyelash because we had a circular marquee tool up. So we go back to the top layer. So that's now covering over what we've done. And we'll stick a layer mask on that. And we will just mask out the areas of the eye. There we go, that's looking good. That's looking good as well. Fantastic. So let's bring those two together. Right, so I think now what we're going to do is we're going to use dodging and burning. One of the things about this technique is we, we now we've smoothed out the skin, we've given the eyes a little bit more of a punch, and what we need to do is give the whole thing a little bit more uh, tone, a little bit more weight to the whole thing. So I'm going to add a dodge and burn layer. So what we'll do is we'll add a fresh layer on the top, so we've got an empty layer there and we come up to edit, come down to there to fill and we'll get options to use the foreground colour and one of the options here is to use a 50% grey. So we'll click OK and that's now filled that with a 50% grey. If we change the blending mode on that to overlay, now it's having absolutely no effect on the image but we can use this as our dodge and burn layer. So we come across to our dodge tool, we press zero on the keyboard will give us the dodge tool. And you can see we've got the dinging bell now. I don't know why. That's fine. Okay, so we've got the dodge tool up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the uh, areas of highlight on Matt, like down the nose, like that. We've got a nice little Rembrandt triangle under the eye there. And I'm going to hit these quite hard. We're going to make quite a, an impact with these. But because we're doing it on a separate layer, we can always dial it back again afterwards. So what I'm doing is I'm hitting everywhere where there's a bit of highlight just to try and bring out a little bit more detail and definition in the image. Right, now we'll switch from the dodge tool to the burn tool. And this is going to do the opposite now. This is going to start to burn in the shadow area. So we're looking for shadow areas around the image. And again, you can adjust the size of the brush using the um, square bracket keys. Drag that under there a little bit. And we've got all the darker areas up in the hair here. Let's go absolutely mad. Let's really hit this. 
So. There's before. There's afterwards. You can see we've had quite an effect on the image. If we want that to be even more, we can control and J and copy that. And now we've gone absolutely way over the top. So we'll bring that down a touch there. In fact, I'm going to group those two together. Right, now we've just made a group of the dodge and burn, so we can actually adjust that globally. Right, so let's have a quick look. This is this so this is where we are. That's how we started with the image. That's where we are now with the image. And you see it's got a real zoom in a bit so you can see a bit closer now. You can see it's starting to have quite a, a unrealistic look to it. Is the skin's very smooth. I think the thing we want to do now is to um turn this into much sharper layer. Let's do a high pass filter on this as well. So I've copied the layer, high pass other, high pass filter and let's really push this up there. Let's push that quite a way up there like that. And now if we put that as an let's try this hard light. Yeah, you can see now how much difference that's made. That's really brought a pop to the entire image. It's it's over sharpened the entire thing, but it really does give quite a an unrealistic look, which is what we're going for here. We're going for a, a hyper realistic look, almost a comic book kind of look to the image. Um, we we'll do a little bit more playing at the moment. Let's do a little bit more playing with the. Right, let's take the vibrancy down a touch. Okay. I think we're probably going to. I might just crop that down a little bit more. Crop this in even tighter. There we go. So that's how the image started. We softened the skin. We've given it some punch. We've uh, done some dodging and burning to bring out the highlights and the shadows. And it's made quite a difference from quite a f a f what now looks like quite a flat image because we've done a lot of work to it. It's given quite a punchy, almost hyper-realistic look to the image. So that's how you can really go extreme on your images. I um, hope you enjoyed it. I'm Dave Vickers. Till next time, see you then.